guys, a warm welcome back to the channel. Now, as you know, I love nothing more than the thrill of finding hidden Ferrari treasure. We got my Ferrari Boxer that was an amazing find. That's currently being restored. We had the Ferrari Testarossa that we discovered in Puerto Rico that we managed to save. And then we had the pinnacle of cars, the Ferrari F40 down in Iraq. Now, with all of those, you'd think there's nothing out there to be found. But you'd be wrong. I get many emails from all over the world about these lost souls that have been discovered that need some TLC. So when this next car rolled into Carrizzeria Body Shop last week, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. A rare Ferrari that has not seen the light of day since 1987. <laughs> Over in the corner here we've got a car that's just come in, it's being stripped down but I've got to share this one with you because it's a very rare Ferrari. It looks like a standard 308 but actually this is one of the first generation that were built in fiberglass as you can hear. Now back in the day these things you couldn't give away, everyone wanted the later cars, no one wanted to touch the fiberglass ones. But nowadays, these are the type that are really sought after. This one is a 1977 car, I believe. And as you can see, not only is it rare, this one is even more rare because it's a right-hand drive car. In 1975, the Ferrari 308 made its debut at both the London and Paris motor shows. The glorious Scaglietti design Pininfarina built car was an instant hit for Ferrari. Replacing the baby V6 engine 246 Dino and sat alongside the Bertone designed 308 GT4, it retained the GT4's 3 litre V8 engine but changed to a dry sump lubrication, producing an impressive, for its day, 255 brake horsepower, propelling the car to 252 kilometres an hour. Now initially the 308 from 1975 to 77 was built in fiberglass known as the Vetro Resina models. Ferrari produced around 700 of these early cars but only 154 of them were right hand drive. The last car was produced around May 77 when Ferrari changed the 308 production to steel body cars. In total, Ferrari produced over 12,308 models over a 10 year period, making this right hand drive Vetro Resina a very sought after car. Typically in Europe, these early fiberglass cars command two to three times more than the later steel bodied models. And currently prices of them range anywhere between 120 to over 200,000 pounds. Back to the car and its unique and amazing story. This 308 sat locked away for the last 34 years. Why it was left, we don't really know. Fortunately, however, unlike my boxer, it was stored inside and subsequently survived remarkably well. Despite being fiberglass, there is still a lot of steel around this car, including the chassis, which I'll show you in a minute as we strip down the car. What we do know about the car is that in its short 10 year period of usage, it was enjoyed, really enjoyed. Just look at the 308's owner's book and the service stamps in just a 12 month period. I have never seen anything like this. It's clocked up almost 70,000 beautiful miles before being locked away. Now you might think with it being locked away, the car had engine problems, but no, the Ferrari was checked over and the compression was all good. The engine even fired up. Now the problem with restoring classic Ferraris like this 308 is finding parts for them and that's where today's video sponsor Surfshark comes in really handy. 
Surfshark is a VPN or virtual private network. It not only protects your private data from prying eyes, but it has a whole host of other cool features. Let me show you a couple of ways that I personally use Surfshark. Now one of my favorite places to search for parts is obviously eBay. Now in America, I find there is a lot more choice. So if I do a search from eBay America and I'm here in the UK, I get 10,091 results. However, if I put my location as let's say Dallas, do a quick refresh, watch the difference. Another 3,800 potential Ferrari parts from my boxer and that is simply because my IP address was showing as in the UK originally. And if I'm not busy editing videos at night, then I like to spend my time relaxing watching some Netflix. With multiple libraries around the world, I can pick and choose at ease with Surfshark. I, let's say I want to watch something from Fantastic Beasts. I click on Mumbai, India, and I've got a whole host of new choices. But here's the coolest bit. Use my code. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Click on that and you're going to save a whopping 83% off plus three months extra free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So it's a no brainer. Now I've got to say a massive thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and continuing to support the channel. The 308's V8 lump is now out of the car and has been taken to Ferrari specialist Stradale Italia where Sam is currently going over it and giving it a full service. Here it is alongside a BBI engine and it's very interesting to see the comparison between the two. Now when that V8 is back in the car it is going to sound delicious. I've been fortunate enough to own a few of these 308s over the years but never a carburetted car and they really do sound good. Have a listen to this. Sounds pretty good, right? Now let's have a closer look at this car and see how it's fed up after being locked away for 34 years. On the inside, it's typical 308. I love the view on these things. The binnacle is just so period correct. Different dials on these compared to uh, the later cars. We've got oil pressure gauge down here and a clock, uh, period correct radio. And this car came with the factory optional extra air conditioning quite a rare thing to have got lovely switch gear on these i love the old it's the same as the box the same as my over 308s but just 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 the noise and just be able to flick those so cool obviously the classic gated manual gearbox on these switch gear is all here as well that's very good these things tend to break so it's nice to see it especially these ones here they really do snap off at the stalk here and again on this side everything works it, it hasn't rusted up really nice everything on the inside here you know the dash is really good all of the vents are here and it's a complete car as you can see the interior yes it needs some work but it's actually not too bad at all look at the seats uh, they got a little bit of wear here, but there is nothing here that can't be really recovered. Door cards, really nice. Dash, look at that. No shrinkage to the dash. This really was a true barn find. And like I say, the fiberglass glass car is coming. It's having the full works done on this one. Uh, if I show you the paintwork here, it never really shows up on uh, camera very well. But let's have a look at the back here. You can just see it's really kind of bubbled. I believe this car has been repainted before. Very different from my car. First of all, spare wheel. We've got this lovely spare wheel. Little zipped compartment at the front there. Like I say, it's being stripped down at the moment. 
we've got the uh, bonnet over here all the lights these are all being stripped out all fiberglass this there's a couple of bits on the car that are steel if you look at the window pillar here you see that's steel and then you can see the join here where it becomes fiberglass again the engine lid as you can see here very different to uh, the later cars a really cool design and I don't know why they changed this but you've got the hinge section here where you've got just a quick release and you can just pull the whole thing off you can see where it goes in here don't know why it's a really really uh, nice design that then you've got the uh, engine lid here a little stay catch and that's really cool again look at that it's on a uh, it's got a little pulley system there and that just sits in there <laughs> lovely little design really cool and then uh, yeah it's all being stripped down the guys are just uh, I wanted to film this before they actually uh, got to it. I didn't realize they were going to start working on it today um, but yeah they've done this in like literally 15-20 minutes two of them and uh, we've got a couple of pictures as it arrived but very very special car we're going to follow the progress on this one so the wheels as you can see the original Campagnolas 14 inch um, these tyres, believe it or not, the date code on these are 1985. Look, plenty of tread and just a little bit really here, a cracking on the side. Amazingly, they survived so well. Full of air. Uh, the wheels are going to have to be uh, refurbed because you can see they've got a little bit of uh, kind of, you know, it's just gone a bit flaky here. Um, and then really you need just the decals, which you can get on these, so they're gonna look good. How long does it normally take, guys? Strip down a car like this. Four days. Two days? Yeah. A lot quicker than me doing mine. Two weeks. You got the headlights out coming out. And the headlights on these. Is that fiberglass? Yeah. They're fiberglass as well, yeah. So Pretty much the whole car on this is fiberglass. A couple of little repairs that need to happen. But the body is actually in pretty decent shape. Paint's not so good, hence why it's here. So we have got what looks to be original speakers here. Look at this, amazing. Now here's some of the bits that have come off the car, all the interior or the seats, they've all gone off with the owner, they're also going to be looked at as well. Now a couple of differences between this 308, the early 308s and the normal ones, as you can see here, this is the back bumper, it's upside down at the moment, but you've got the reverse lights here, mounted inside the actual bumper. Now if you remember a normal 308, I'll show you in a minute, so we've got the brake lights there, the stop lights, and then we've got the indicators lights. So now on other later 308s, you've got the insert in the middle there, which is the reverse lamps. Now these early ones are very different. Yeah, they're rare. I didn't even know this until this car came in and I uh, learned a thing or two myself about it. So we've got that. If we come to the back of the car as well, another difference is Normally, here at the back, you can see it's completely smooth, completely flat. We would normally have a recess here for the rear number plate. Now, that doesn't matter if it's a US car or a Euro car, we'd have some kind of recess. Not on this one. Doors, they are fiberglass as well. They've all been stripped down. So this is an 81, 82 car. This, as you can see, 308 GTS. Later car, no reverse lights in the back bumper here. This is the reverse light here in the indicator housing. So Ferrari made a little change there. Let's put this in perspective. Back when this car was tucked away after last seeing Tarmac, Top Gun was still a box office sensation. 
Tower, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Our screens were terrorized by some lost boy vampires. You'll never grow old, Michael. And you'll never die. And Gordon Gecko ruled yuppie Wall Street. Lunch? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Lunch is for wimps. Okay. The coolest fact of all to finish off is this 308 and my boxer were both sold last by the same Ferrari garage, Modena. Well guys, there you go. An absolutely amazing find, this one. Barn find Ferrari being restored and put back on the road where it absolutely deserves to be. This, can you believe, was not on the road since 1987. It had 10 short years, 10 enjoyable years with about 60,000 miles, and it's gonna have many, many more. I know the owner is absolutely stoked to bits that he has managed to get this one. This is the one he wanted, a glass fiber 308. It's been after for many, many years. We're gonna follow its journey through the body shop. It's gonna have a bit more prep next week, and then it's gonna go into the spray booth have a lovely coat of Rosso Corsa. We're gonna continue the journey with it as well though. We're gonna uh, watch it get its engine put back in, uh, the interior, the suspension, everything else that's gonna be done on this car. And finally, when it gets that key turned and that V8 fires up for the first time in a long, long, long time. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in your comments below. What would you do on this one? Would you do a full nut and bolt or would you do exactly what the owner is doing? Sympathetic restoration and an enjoyable car at the end of it that you can r drive and not worry about. Or would you park it up in a garage and just watch the prices go sky high on these things? Hope you enjoyed it guys. See you shortly in the next one. Ciao for now.